Let's continue our exploration of Django REST framework. In this video, we're going to look at something new, and that's view sets. These are a key part of the Django REST framework API. So let's go to the documentation to begin with. Now, what are view sets? Let's begin with that question. So Django REST framework allows you to combine the logic for a set of related views into a single class called a view set. And you might be familiar in other frameworks with the concept of a resource or a controller. For example, in Laravel, I believe you have controllers. So the view set is simply a type of class-based view in Django, but it doesn't provide any of the traditional method handlers such as get and post, and instead it provides actions such as list and create. Let's look at a quick example before we start writing some code. So what we have here is something called a user view set, and what that inherits from is something from a module in REST framework called view sets, and that's a view set class here. And we also have a model view set as well. We're going to see that later in the video. And then we have methods on the view set for common operations. For example, to get a list of resources, we have a list method and to retrieve an individual resource by primary key in this case, as you can see in the parameter, we have a retrieve method. So these are called actions or action methods. And when we use these view sets, we also have routers that we're going to introduce as well. And what we're going to use in this video is the Django REST framework default router. We'll see an example of that soon. And if we go to this classy Django REST framework site, which I'll leave a link to below the video, there's a section here on view sets. And you can see the different view sets that are available. We have a generic view set, a model view set, and we have a base view set class here as well. We also have the read only model view set, and finally the view set mixin. Let's again go back to the documentation. So there are two main advantages of using a view set class over a normal REST framework view. The first advantage is that repeated logic can be combined into a single class. And in the above block of code, you only need to specify the query set once and it's going to be used across multiple views. And another advantage of view sets is that by using the routers in Django REST framework, we no longer have to deal with wiring up the URL configuration ourselves. So these routers automatically know how to create REST API routes for a view set. What we're going to look at in this video is the model view set. So let's go to that on classy Django REST framework. And this view set provides default create, retrieve, update, partial update, destroy, and list actions. And these actions actually constitute a full set of CRUD operations on a given model or query set in Django. So it allows you to create all of those very easily by using the model view set class. Now what I want to do is go to the project that we've been working on in this series. Now we have a model here called product. And if we go to views.py, we've been working on this product list create API view in the last set of videos. And we've got a lot of functionality just by using these fields on the class. So we built that up using what's called a list create API view. That's a generic view in Django REST framework. What we're going to do in this video is look at another model. And that's the order model that we have in this application. And what we're going to use is a view set to actually create the different views for the order. Now, if we go to urls.py, we had some order URLs in previous videos. I'm actually going to remove these because we're going to rewrite those URLs using Django REST Framework view sets and using the routers that are built in. Let's go back to views.py and right at the top here, we're going to bring in that import of the view sets module. So that's from REST Framework. I'm just going to bring that in here. From REST Framework, we're going to import the view sets module. And then if we scroll down, we had a couple of views here for orders. Now we're going to start by commenting these out because we're not going to use these generic views that we had in the previous videos. What we're going to do now is write a view set. So let's create a new class here called order view set, and that's going to inherit from the view sets dot model view set class. Now we can copy some of the attributes that we had before, for example, the query set and the serializer class. I'm going to copy both of these and let's paste them into the view set and we can uncomment them in the model view set. And for now, let's also add a permission classes field to the view set. And like before, we can specify the permissions that are going to be used by default across all of the views in the view set. And we're going to use allow any. So currently no permission or authentication restrictions are in place for the view set. We are going to change that though in the next video. But for now, we're going to make this open to all. Now, before we can test this out and see what it actually gives us, we're going to need to wire up the URLs. So let's go to urls.py. And at the top from REST framework, and we're going to use the routers module here, we're going to bring in an import of the default router. Now we have our existing URL patterns here. What we're going to do just below that is we're going to create a router here by instantiating the default router. 
And then we're going to register the URLs for this view set. So router.register, that's a method on the router. And we're going to give this URL a prefix of orders. And that's because the URLs for this view set are going to relate to order functionality. And if we look at VS Code here for the router.register method, the second parameter is a view set. So we're going to provide the view set that we just wrote in views.py. And that was the order view set here. And the final thing we need to do here is take our existing URL patterns and we're going to append the router.urls property. And that's going to add all the routes that have been registered for the order view set on the line above. So in this video, we're seeing the routers and the view sets for the first time. Let's go to the documentation for routers in Django REST framework. Now, some web frameworks such as Rails provide functionality for automatically determining how the URLs for an application should be mapped to the logic that deals with handling incoming requests. And REST Framework adds support for automatic URL routing to Django. And it provides you with simple, quick and consistent ways of wiring up your view logic to a set of URLs. Now, if we go to the usage section, there is something called a simple router. And the signature is very similar to the default router. So if we look here, you can see it takes a prefix and a view set when you're using the register function. And then you use router.urls to actually access the generated URLs on that router. So you can add them to the URL patterns that you have in your Django application. The prefix is just a prefix to use for the set of routes that are associated with the view set. And then, of course, the view set is just the class itself. So what happens here for the user view set is it generates a couple of URLs. So the URL patterns are shown below here. We have the slash users URL, which is going to give a list of users. And then we also have a URL that has a dynamic primary key. That's the user detail URL. Now these are generated automatically by the router. And if we go to the API guide on the simple router class, this router includes routes for the standard set of CRUD URLs or CRUD actions. And these URLs follow the REST API conventions for URLs. So for example, if the prefix is going to be orders for us, to get all orders, in other words, a list of orders, we're just going to send a GET request to that URL. And that's created by the router in combination with the view set. And similarly, to create a new order, we're just going to send a POST request to slash orders, and it will create that for us. And again, the URL and the view set is going to handle the URL routing for us. And similarly, any URLs that require a lookup of an individual object, these are also created by the view set and the default router. So for example, to retrieve an individual record or to update a record, to partially update a record with a patch request, and finally to destroy a record, these are all something that require a lookup of a primary key or another field. So the simple router and the default router in Django REST framework will create all of those for us when we use the structure that we built up already in the code. Now, if we go to the default router, this is very similar to the simple router that we looked at above, but it also includes a default API root view, and that returns a response that contains hyperlinks to all the list views. Now, I want to see that in action just before we go on, so let's go back to VS Code. At the bottom on the terminal, I'm going to start the Django development server, and we have the root URL of slash orders, so we're going to go to the browser, and I'm getting a 404 at that page. We need to go back here and remove this slash from router.register. Once we've done that, if we go back to the page and refresh, we get back the order list page. So all we've done here is added a view set to views.py, and that inherits from the model view set. And then we set the query set that we want to operate on, and this query set relates to the order model. And we have the serializer class as well, and also permission classes in this case. And then we take that view set, and then we use the default router in REST framework and register a prefix of orders and associate that with the order view set and append those to the URL patterns. Now, the real power of these view sets, if we go back to the browser, is that not only can we list all of the orders, but if we go to the bottom, we also have this form for creating a new order in the database that's also added by the view set. Now notice here that to create a new order, we are being asked to generate the order ID ourselves, but that should be auto-generated. So let's go back to VS Code. Now we set up the serializer earlier in the series. So if we go down here, we have an order serializer, and that inherits from the model serializer that we saw at the start of the series. Now we want the order ID to be present, of course, but we don't want to create that when we send a POST request. So what we can do here is we can override the defaults for the order ID. And we're going to set that to a serializers.uuid field. And we're going to make this field read only. So we'll set that to true. And if we save that and go back to the page here and refresh this page, you can see that that field has been removed from the form at the bottom. So I'm going to create a new order here for John Doe. And let's set the status to confirmed. 
If we post that, you can see we get back this response with the new order that has been created in the database. So with the view set, not only can we list the orders, but we can also create new ones. And the view set also adds URLs for retrieving a single entity and updating and deleting that entity as well, as we saw when we looked at the simple router URL list. So let's go back here and take one of these order IDs and we're going to append that to the URL at the top. So I'm going to add that there and that's an individual order. And you can see now we have a different page and this is for the order instance. You can see the actions at the top. For example, we can delete this order by sending the delete request. And again, that's all added by the view set and the URL is set up for that delete request by the simple router or the default router. By default, we're sending this get request and we get back the order details here. And if we go to the bottom again, we have the HTML form. When we submit this form, it's going to send that request to the back end in order to actually update the item. So for example, this order here has a status of pending. If we wanted to change that to confirmed, we can send the put request here and that's going to update the status. So when we get back the order, you can see in the JSON data, the status is now confirmed. And one final thing I want to show, if we go back to the order list page here, you can see we're still getting these pagination parameters from the previous video. And that's because we added some pagination settings to the REST framework setting in our Django application. So the default pagination class is set to page number pagination. If we go back to views.py and we want to disable this, we can set a new field here of pagination class and we can set that to none. So even though pagination is enabled across our entire application, we can override that if we want to get rid of it. So we're going to set pagination class to none. And if we go back to the browser here and back to the list page, if we refresh this page now, you can see we don't get those pagination parameters and we just get back the JSON data for each order in the list. So I just want to summarize what we've shown in this video. What we have in our Django REST framework views.py file is a class here that inherits from viewsets.modelViewset. And the model view set allows you to very easily create a set of CRUD URLs that are tied to a given order or query set in your Django application. In this case, we've tied it to the order model via this query set here. And what the model view set is going to do is it's going to include implementations for various actions. For example, the actions provided are the list action to get a list of objects. We also can retrieve an individual object, create a new object, and we can update an existing object as well via a put request, or if you want to use a patch request, there is a partial update action as well. And finally, you can remove items with delete requests and that will call the destroy action. So the model view set will provide automatic implementations of all of those actions. And if you need to override them, you can also do that to provide custom logic. We'll see examples of that in future videos. And the attributes that we saw previously with generic views, such as query set, serializer class and permission classes, these all work with view sets as well. And that's because the model view set extends the generic API view class. So to summarize, the model view set has provided us with all of the endpoints for a CRUD API centered around one of our database models, in this case, the order model. And we've been able to do that with only a few lines of code. This is unbelievably efficient if you know how to use these patterns. We have this view set here and it's five lines of code. And the only other thing we needed to add was this default router here in urls.py. So we instantiated a default router and we used the router.register method to register a set of URLs with the orders prefix. And we tied that to the functionality of the order view set in that method. And then finally, we just appended the router.urls to the existing URL patterns. And that made them available to our API clients who could then send any kind of request that conformed to one of those actions that we mentioned previously. So we're going to look at view sets in greater detail in the upcoming videos. We're going to look at actions. We're going to look at permissions and filtering. So how can we integrate all of those within a view set class? And this is important to know because if you use Django REST framework in your career, you're probably going to encounter view sets. They're very common and they are very useful for creating these CRUD APIs. And you can also add your own custom URLs and actions. We're going to see examples of that in the next video. So that's going to be all for this video. If you want to support the channel, we have this coffee page. It's linked in the description. And if you want to learn about Django testing, we recently released a series with the Net Ninja YouTube channel. It's an amazing channel for web development. And this is a series that I created for the Net Ninja on testing in Django. So check that out if you have some time. And thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. And we'll see you in the next video.